Oh, wow, that's a big group. Nobody say anything from the group. <laughs> so we're doing oh. A. <laughs> okay, so Diana's going to do this one. Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, A. So I plugged in the five to where all the X's are in the problem. So D of five equals 150 minus 20 parentheses five. Okay. And then it's 150 minus 100, and I got 50. Okay, awesome. And then what does that mean in terms of the problem? Um, from what I understood from my group, is um, I said after five hours, the train has 50 miles left. Okay, the train has 50 miles left or it's gone 50 miles, which one? Mm. It's gone 50 miles? Hmm. I have a little trouble with the wording. Okay, so what, what does everyone else think? Has the train gone 50 miles or does it have 50 more miles to go? 50 more miles to go, right? That's what I'm asking you. Yeah. Any, anyone else? I, I, thought, I thought it was 50 hours. I thought it was hours too. 50 oh. hours. And I and that's where I got kind of confused. I was like, okay, 50 hours when it was only 20. The X is giving the hours, oh, but the, the 20 is, is the 20 hours, right? Yeah. So, so let's look at our problem. It says it's X hours, yeah. right? So yeah. if if the yep. five is getting plugged in for the X, doesn't that mean the X is five? If that's getting plugged in for the X. Right. So that's five okay. hours. And then we're solving for D. And what's D? The distance yes. in miles that the train is from the station. <laughs> so does that clarify a little bit? Does anyone want to guess now what it is? 50 miles to, from, what, what is 50 it? 50 miles from the station. Uh huh. Or 50 oh. miles away from the station, something like that. 50 more miles to go, some, something like that. Because it says from a station, right? That, that's the piece it's telling us. It's not how far it's gone, it's how far it has to go still. Mm -hmm. 50 more miles. Yep, yeah, 50 miles either to go or away or from the station, whatever thing you want to use it describes it that way. Hey. Any questions on this one, on A? Yes, I'm not sure about this question. Please. On A? Yeah, please. Oh, which which part were you not sure about? Were it's you not to... about the, the um, pure place with five. The other one how has the way, like 50, 50 miles or? It is 50 miles. So maybe um, Diana was the one helping me with this one. So Diana, could you repeat that sentence again? Just kind of like slower. Um, of what the final sentence is. After five hours, um, the train has 50 miles left. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions on A? No? Okay, let's do B. So uh, someone from that group we have Charmaine, Fernanda, Jonathan, and Sage. Can I do this one right here? Go for it. Okay. So I do the little, I'm going to just show you so it's easier instead of saying. Is that oh, better? That's, that's really hard to see. Sorry. Oh. You might want to say oh. it. That's like a whole lot of stuff on your paper. <laughs> is that, is that, uh, oh, right here? B? Can you? No, just tell me what you did. <laughs> Okay, it's actually it's hard to see. Uh, for the B, I just drew the T chart like we did yesterday a bunch. I drew the T chart and I did X plugins and I just did through zero through 
six with my group. I did the sixth one, but I did zero through five last yeah. night. Okay, so we could just do and zero I, to one because you only need yeah. two to find the slope, right? Yeah. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Thank you. I did a lot extra then. Uh, so what was, did, what I just is, plugged in the values on the like, last the previous problem in A. We just plug it in. Okay. Uh, what did you get for when you plugged in zero? I got 150, which is okay. at distance wise, starting wise. Okay. And and what about one? I got one oh, third. I, I actually got 130 for that one instead of 150. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. And then and then you had a constant change. If I, when I did the other ones, I had a constant change of 20. Ah, interesting. So let's do our formula then. M equals, we put the y's on top, right? X is yes. on bottom. Okay, so what which Rise number? Over. Yep. So what do you want on top? Tell me what you're putting on top. Um ooh. I actually didn't, I did it, did I do it wrong then? I didn't do it the rise over runs, but what would I put up top? Would I put the Y? The Y's go up top, you subtract the yeah. Y's. One, 150 over uh, zero and then 150 over one. Right. Wait. Oh, you're doing Y2 minus Y1 over it. Yeah, one. we can do it that way though. If you want to make that other one the second point, it doesn't matter. You could assign this one to be point 0.1 or point 0.2. It doesn't make a difference. You'll get the same answer. Oh. Oh, so it doesn't matter that what it does in the Y when I put it in there, like 150 and 130 is a 20 change. That's not the actual answer. Oh, I see. No, you missed something when you did it that way. So let's well, actually, um, let's actually plug it in and see what you missed. Okay, her. Subtract the top. Then it'd be negative one. Um, on top. top. And at the top, it'd be 20. So 20 over negative one. Ah, okay. So what's 20 over negative one? What does that equal? Don't you, you flip it or something? No, it's like reducing it, right? 20 over negative one. What does that equal to? Uh, negative, negative 20. Negative 20. So when you did it the way you did it, you said you got 20. Oh. So be careful. So is it best to, is it best to use the rise over run formula for this problem? Um, if you're going to make a table and do it that way, then sure. Yeah, that's the best. If you're going to make a table and go that route. Now, there is another way to solve this that I'm curious if anyone else did. I did it the easy way or like the simpler way. Okay, what'd you do? <laughs> I just, the formula they gave me, I just put it into y equals mx plus b form. So I just flipped the negative 20 and the 150. So I did negative 20x plus 150. Okay, so you just rearranged mm. it a little bit using what yeah. we call the commutative property. So I could see what the slope was. Okay, so which no. one's the slope? Wait, to teacher, we can just uh, keep up with the, the, my, the slope in the function directly because we have 150 minus 20 m, x, which is uh, the, uh, the slope. Min min minus 20 is the slope because minus 20 x. Uh huh. Directly because I just pick up it in the, the function. Yep. So that's it's another way. To do it. I mean, that's the way I would have done it, but you know, um, when Jonathan shared, he did it a different way, which is fine. You you both I just, get negative twenty, which is yeah, fine. Because, messed up because like I'm going down in the y's and for my thing, I just put I put those little you know triangles going down and I put twenty and I didn't put decreasing twenty, you know, uh -huh. so I messed myself over, yeah, definitely. So did we have to make a table for this problem? No. No, we didn't have to. We could just put it in y equals mx plus b form, and then there's our m right there, negative 20. It's directly in the function. Yeah, but if you didn't see that and you got stuck, I'm glad you made a table and figured it out anyways. You used another way to do it. Yeah. That was literally the first way I saw it, and then I started thinking that can't be it that easy. <laughs> I tried to make it way harder than it was. <laughs> Sometimes it is. <laughs> Sometimes. All right. Hey, Miss. Um, <clears throat> Miss, I know this is off topic, but uh, my um, school email wasn't working, so I wasn't able to send myself the pictures of the notes, and I just set it back up. Am I still able to submit it? Because I just set my email back up on my computer. Well, and well, I could. Yeah, we shouldn't be doing notes and things right now, though. This is we're doing class. No, right I'm now. not doing. I'm not doing notes right now. I just uh, I lost my school email. I did the notes last night. Yeah. But I just couldn't submit it 
because well, why don't in, why don't like, you email us about it or talk to us during office hours let's try to use the the class time while we're all wait together to focus on the lesson all right well I, okay? I fixed it sorry okay yeah send us an email or talk to us in office hours okay okay all right so uh jonathan you're not done yet you still have to interpret it mm. so jonathan you ready to interpret it and rise, I was muted. Uh, but the right since I put positive twenty, I should probably change my statement then because uh, the rate of change is decreasing twenty miles every hour. Okay, yeah, that's the way to do it. Okay. Because say okay. for for every additional hour, the distance decreases by twenty miles. Um, you could say for every hour that passes. The train gets 20 miles closer to the station. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could word it, but it should say something about, you know, decreasing or getting closer to the station or um, something like that. And it should say for every hour or every additional hour, something where it's increasing an hour at a time. Does anyone have a sentence they want me to check where they're not sure if it's right? Uh, I did uh, rate of change equals every hour the train, every hour the train gets 20 miles closer to the station. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Anyone else have a sentence they want me to check? If you're not sure, I'd rather you have me check it now. Uh, how did Jonathan word it? Because I was wording it the way he was. Sorry, I was wording it the way Jonathan was wording it. I just yeah, didn't you, get the last one. To read it again? Okay. Yeah, please. I how uh, for every hour they the train drives it get, it drives 20 miles close but is it is it i put for every hour the train gets 20 miles closer yeah that's fine right, to the right. station right yeah. to the station yeah okay. the station. all right anyone else or right. we're good to move on hey teacher excuse me because because the slope he's here is negative 20 right yes uh-huh that's correct it, it, it's, it's decreasing it's not it's decreasing with with 20 hours like the, with the minus it's not with the okay it's the opposite of increase yeah yeah so you could say that for every hour that passes um the train the yeah the distance to the station decreases right that's that's what we're, we're measuring we're measuring the distance to the station. So you could say it that way if you want to include decreasing. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, somebody else from that group. Um, we have Charmaine, Fernanda. All right, I actually wanted to clarify one thing. Oh, go ahead. For the rate of change, um, could we just put the rate of change as negative 20, would that be okay? No, that's not in context. You should put in context. That's why we say interpret. Otherwise, you're just writing it. You're not interpreting it. So there's a difference between just saying like the slope is negative 20. That's just a statement. That's not an interpretation. Interpretation should have to do with the actual context of the problem. Oh, gotcha. Okay, thank you. I wasn't sure. I was like, okay, so what? Okay, I've got it. <laughs> I'm glad you asked because there, you know, if you put that on the test and you get it wrong, you're gonna be frustrated about it. It's good to ask now, so you know. All right. Remember, we have our test Monday, so ask away if you're not sure about something that we're going through. All right, thirty-one. Charmaine, Fernanda, or Sage for thirty-one. Fernanda, Sage, Charmaine, anybody there? <laughs> Sage and Fernanda, are you here? I don't see your cameras. Are you here? I didn't get to 31. Okay, Sage, did you get to 31? Or Charmaine, did you get to 31? Um, so I was gonna say, I'm not really sure if I did it right, but I use Desmos to find out whether the function was linear or not. 
Oh. And I did find that it was linear because it there was a constant um, increasing line. And then you can use a T-chart. So you could put X is zero. Um, so you get 22 and 44. And, okay. So if you put in, you would get a 22 or a 44, depending on what numbers you're using. But I did say it was linear. And then the T-chart was where I was still working. Okay. Um, All right. And then you got the plus five part on there also still. Mm -hmm. All right. So it is, it is linear. You're right. The only thing I would say about the way you went about it is on a test, can you use Desmos? No. No. So we should definitely talk about a way to do it without Desmos. Desmos is like, if you're at home and you're doing it and you want to check that you did something right, then that's a great resource to use but not the way to solve it because then on a test, you won't be able to solve it. Yeah, but it's a good resource for sure. Did anyone in the class actually get to explaining why it's linear? That way we can go back into groups and finish the other ones. You know, teacher, for me, for example, in this function, because you have fx equals to 20, 22x plus or minus five, like it's like the same, we have two function there. One it's 20x plus five, another one it's 20x minus five. It's the it's the func linear function. And I did two graphs and I noticed they are they both are linear. Okay. <clears throat> so you're saying that it's linear because it's in that form, right? Because it's yes. in the form y equals mx plus b. Yeah, I put I also yes. put it was a linear function because it's in slope intercept form. Yep. Yes. Exactly. And I'm going to uh, abbreviate slope intercept form. So it is a function. And notice, does everyone see that, that it's in that form? Y equals mx plus b? Yeah, it's uh, you slope the b, it's minus five or plus five. Yeah, does everyone recognize that? Because that's going to save you a lot of time. If you see it and you're like, oh, hey, that's y equals mx plus b. It's linear. Boom. Then you can move on. Right, it's going to save you a lot of time if you're able to recognize what type of function it is based on the formulas we've done. So basically, for these, if anything that's you, we want to know if if the, all of these that are following these questions 31, 33, 35, we want to see if it follows y equal mx plus b format, and then we know if it's a line. Is that what you're saying? Or if it can be put into that form. Sometimes we have to move it around a little bit. Like remember on this one. Uh, number one, the first one we did, it's not mm -hmm. in y equals mx plus b, but um, we moved it around so that it was in y equals mx plus b form. So sometimes you have to move it around a little bit to get it there, but if it can be written in, in mx, y equals mx plus b form, then it's linear. So see, look, I had to move it around a little bit, but once I moved it around, whoops, I don't know why I put an equal there, that should be a plus, um, then it's in y equals mx plus b. So sometimes it's already in that form and you're like, great, awesome, good to go, next problem. Sometimes it's not, and you might have to move it around a little bit or see, can I even put it in this form? If I can't, then it's not linear. My question here, teacher, it's, it's is it, okay. do we can uh, graph the, like, do the graph or directly just, they wanna just AC it like MX plus B. I wanna say it, it's function linear for both of them. Yeah, on, on 31, you're going to say if it's linear and then you're going to throw it on a graph. But I would throw it on a graph using your slope and your intercept because that's going to be way faster than a table. And if you're on the test, you want to save time so that you can focus on the other things. You don't want to spend 15, 20 minutes making a table. Yes, but we need to do two graphs, right? No, just the one. Because the function, like we, like we have two functions there, like one is 20x plus five, another one is 20x minus five. No, it's only one. Uh, maybe it was a translation thing. Um, there's only 22x plus five. We don't have minus? No, that might be from when it got transferred over for you. Uh, maybe because I have it uh, plus minus and then I- Oh the no, it's only a plus. Thank you, because look, I, I got to oh, go. That's okay. I'm glad, I'm glad we got it cleared up. Okay, okay. so now that everyone, everyone sees that it's in that form, do you know how to graph it without a table? Because a table's good if you forget how to graph it, but do you know how to graph it without a table? 
You just have to plug in like zero, right? And then or just random numbers to get like wise, right? That's, like that's the, using a table. That's like a table, basically. Would it be, can I put 22 over one? Okay, yeah. that's our slope, right? Good, our slope is 22 over one. Let me try to, I'll draw like a little fake graph right here. Ooh, not gonna be perfect. Hopefully you have graph paper. Um, but our slope is 22 over one and our intercept, so I'll write it here, slope oh. is 22 over one and our intercept, which is our B is five. So that point is zero comma five, okay? So what we do with the B, that is our starting place. This is where we're gonna start. We're gonna start at zero five. So on your graph, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're gonna start at five. We're gonna put a dot there. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't done this problem yet, do it right now with me so you know how to do it. So you know how to graph these. So you're gonna start at five and then our slope is our rise over our run. So that's because they're both positive, it's gonna be 22 up and one to the right, because that's where the positives go left to right. Right is positive. So it's gonna be hard for me on here, but you pretend I'm drawing 22 lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know seven, what they did eight. in this case? I just put five, 10, 15, 20, just. 20, 21, 22. Yeah, you can go by fives. I'm just showing yeah. you the like yeah. long, long way. You can totally go by fives. So up 22, and then I went right one. Okay, you can go by fives. You can go 5, 10, 15, 20 and graph it that way. Totally fine. I know we have to graph them. <laughs> That's me not reading. But can I just graph them on a separate paper? And then when I submit them, can I just put them all together? Like yeah. 31, because I have no room. Yeah, that's fine. At the bottom of my paper. You scan it all together, though. Yeah. So see how much quicker that was than making a table? Yes. Start at 5, and then our rise over run. So up 22, write 1, put another dot, connect it, good to go. Um, but I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. I thought we need three. I thought we would need three points. You can. can you, uh, three is usually a safer bet in case you made a mistake with your counting or something. You'll notice it with three. Um, I did two because I don't want to draw another 22 lines going up. Oh, it's going to okay. get a no. little crazy on here. <laughs> okay, no, no. I see. I see what um, you saying now. I don't reason I was saying um, three because I'm like, what if I don't know the third point, but if I just continue to use rise over run, I get my third point. Okay. Yep. Exactly. All right. So are there any questions on how to graph like this? Because y'all are about to go back to groups and we're going to move on, but this question could be in your homework. It could be on your test. I know we're going to move on to 33, which is a totally different problem. But I want to have to Any questions on that? How to graph it? All right. Okay. So let's go back to groups. We're going to continue. Um, the people who said they finished, did you graph or did you finish because you didn't graph? Uh. I mean, I, could, I finished it, I didn't graph. Okay, so you might need to just, um, you might I need. I graphed it. You did? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll all right. So we're going to keep going. If you didn't finish, you're going to do 33, 35, 37. And then if you did, you're going to move on to 39 and 41. So those are the ones we're working on. I have a question for you, teacher. Yeah. For the 39, and is the slope in the table? Down. Look down. It's like on 39. Yes, 39. 39 is an XY table. It's an XY table. The, a, the a, I'm, I'm talking about the N. And is the slope there, right? There is no M given to you. You have to find M. It, it okay. The, because we have X, Y, N. There's just X and Y. That's it. There's no M on the table. Okay, okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. 
Okay, all right, let's go back to our groups and keep going. Or 31 and 37, do you want me to graph them um, right now? Cause I, I could graph them. Um, yeah, just have it, I mean, you can you can graph it at some point. You're gonna have to have it all graphed anyway. Okay. Yeah. okay, cause I did like, cause I know from notes 3.6, they gave us like a little chart. Mm -hmm. So I just use that as a for reference for each one. And I kind of drew like a, oh, I don't know, you could see. Sketch? Oh, it's... Yeah, like right here. On uh, what they would look like. Yeah, you should actually graph it because these have okay. been like shifted and transformed and all kinds of stuff. Okay, thank you. Jay, Jonathan, Michael. Um, could I ask some questions real quick about these problems? Sure. Okay. So for 31, um, let me look at it real quick. Here, I can show you. So I see okay. 22. Oh. Thank you. 22x, I see you, you just put one underneath it. Uh -huh. because, um, I guess it's just an, um, an x is it's, the one. It's a or? whole number. 22 is a whole okay. number. So mm -hmm. the only way to write a whole number as a fraction is just to put a one under it. You can do that with any whole number, like three, negative five, any whole number. And then plus five. So zero five um where would he have gotten the x for you know that relation? for zero five mm -hmm. so is this it just is what, you don't have an x or well this is what we call y intercept mm -hmm. what that means is if i plug in zero i get five okay so if I were to put a zero right here instead of an X and multiply 22 times zero, I would get zero plus five. So I would just get five. Okay. So rather than actually solving it, we have this understanding that it's always gonna be the Y-intercept. So that is gonna be zero comma five. because so we already know that's called our Y-intercept. If I plug in zero, I get five. So then it would be like one and 10 and so on or no, no, like, zero five is just your intercept. That's it. And then you use that with the slope to graph it. So the 22 is our up because it's positive. And then the one is how far right we go. I see. Okay. So we start at zero five and then we go up 22 and right one and put another dot. Mm -hmm. So then it would become 22, six? Um, it would become, if you're going up one, up 22, that means your y is increasing by 22, right? Okay. And then your x is increasing by one. So your new point would be 127, technically. OK. Yeah. Thank you. And then, so for 33, um, just with the one, would that be 1 over 1 again? And then it would well, be 0, one, 0? Is that one linear? Is it in the form y equals mx plus b? No. That would be no. nonlinear, right? I mean, technically it's linear, but it's a special kind. It's one of the ones we talked about, um, I think two days ago. We talked about two special kinds. We talked about vertical and we talked about horizontal. These are special kinds because they don't have a slope in front. So this one is a Y equals. So that means it's gonna be the horizontal one because you would on your graph go up to wherever that y is, let's say it's y equals three, and then you would draw your line at y equals three, right? I see, yeah. So this is y equals one, so it's a horizontal line. So that one, you're just gonna go to one and then draw it. Okay. Yeah. So for how would you know if like f of x equals one, how do you know that's y versus it being x? Because um, f of x represents y. The, the symbol, the notation f of x is I the remember, same yeah. thing as a y. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. um, and so going forth from there, um, is it okay we work through this one and I can go? I'm sorry if I'm taking your time or. Oh, no, I mean, we're here to help, but I just want to make sure you're working with groups too, you know. I am. I, I yeah. Yeah. So um, 35, you said you had a question on? Uh, 33. 
Oh, 33. Or would that just be it? It. That's it. Yeah. 33. Okay. That's it. We graphed it. I mean, you just go to y equals one and graph it across. That's it. Okay. Yeah. And so 35 is the same one as 31, right? It's in the MX plus B format. It's not though. There's absolute values around it. That's not part of y equals MX plus B. Okay. So it's not linear. That's an absolute value. So you have to make a table to graph it or use, um, yeah, you have to make a table to graph it. Yeah. And so how would you go about making a table for that? I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. You're just gonna make a table, X, Y, plug in some X's, you get to pick. So, so would it be zero and then one? You need more than that when you're graphing a nonlinear function. I'd probably, I usually go with these five or like a classic, they're like a classic five that people pick. And you're just going to plug each one in and get your Y's and graph it. Okay. So one would be the Y, right? X plus one. No, this is your function you're plugging it into. So this is the same as y equals the absolute value of x plus 1. So to get y, you have to plug in your x, right, and then solve. I see. Okay. So right. negative it would be negative 1 for y for the first one? What's the absolute value of negative 1, though? You forgot the absolute value. Um. <laughs> absolute value is means distance from 0. So on a number line, how far away from zero is negative one? One. One, right. yeah, so it's just one. It makes it positive, basically. So would it essentially just flip the positive negative of each number? Or I don't, I'm like not if you sure. had positive one in the absolute? It would stay positive because distance is always positive. So what, the Y in this case should always be positive. Thank you. Sorry, it's been um, two years since Algebra 2. So oh, it's okay. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Is it constant? It's not linear. If it if f is a linear function, mm -hmm. determine if it is also a constant. I mean, that's what that means. It, it is a linear function, right? Determine if f is a linear function. If f mm -hmm. is a linear function, then determine if it's a constant function. So it's linear and it's a constant function. And they put that into y equals mx plus b. They can put it into y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah, that's what I was trying to get. Mm -hmm. So we could have y equals zero x plus one technically. So technically we can put it into y equals mx plus b. Okay. It's just our slope is zero. You mean in this case, teacher, when we have like, uh, we, we can just say is a constant. We need to say is a linear function and is a constant, right? Yeah, because it says in the directions, if it is linear, then determine if it's a constant. So we already must have said, yes, it's linear in order to check if it's a constant. Because it's linear, because it's a horizontal and it's across the graph in the y equals to one, right? Yep, yep. It's still a line. It's just a special it's kind of line. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because they, they said it's linear, but it's is a constant because the fx it's okay. It's linear and a constant. Yeah. Yeah. Once you graph it, could you do the vertical line test to see if it's linear? Oh, what what is the vertical line test test? <laughs> What is the uh, vertical line test test for? I mean, you just run top to bottom, run lines, and then if two oh. points touch, then it won't be linear, right? Mm. I think. Any anyone in the class remember what is the vertical line test test for? Yes, when 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 y equals to zero, x equals to one. What does it test for? Test for a function. A function. function. There you go, Ashley. Okay, okay. Test for a function, not linear. It tests for a function. So if you use vertical line test, you're testing it whether or not it's a function, not whether or not it's linear. So don't mix those up. It's not about linear. All lines are functions except for vertical. All the other lines are functions, um, but it does not test to see if it's linear. It tests to see if it's a function. 
So vertical line test tests <laughs> if it is a function, whether it's like a relation is a function or the graph is a function, whatever it is. It tests if it's a function, not if it's linear. In this case, vertical is a function when x equals to one or equals to something. The only linear function, the only, yeah, linear that is not a function would be vertical. Vertical is not a function. Okay. A vertical line is not a function because it, it, um, it uh, doesn't work with the vertical line test. Okay. I think usually when we talk about linear, we talk about linear functions. Uh, so usually we don't even include the vertical lines, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it's technically a line. It's just not a linear function. It's yeah. not a function. Yeah. It's technically a line, though. It breaks that function test horribly. Like at every oh, point. yeah. <laughs> every point. All right. I think we're at, what, 35 next? So um, we have Caitlin, Kayla, and Terry. I'll, I'll try 35. All right. I'm not sure if it's right because I'm still trying to um, get an idea, but um, the absolute value um, is nonlinear. Good. And um, it's not a constant. Good. That one I'm not sure about. Because no. uh, when I drew the line, it seemed like it was constant to me. Um, but I did mine um, when I when I drew the line. I did it with the t test, so I wasn't really sure if that was an appropriate way to do it. Um, you know, in order to find out it's but it, it's a it was a constant rate of change um, going upward. Okay, so if it's not a linear function, we are not going to check if it's a constant function because it's automatically not, like if it's not a linear function, then it's not a constant function. Okay. Yeah. So, con so constant function is a horizontal line. Okay, how in the heck did I get, not get, a I, I, mine was not going horizontal when I tried to plot it. So even, I mean, so if it's non-linear, and it's not a constant, there is like no way, um, like you, like we were supposed to graph it, right? That's correct, yeah. So how would I have graphed it? I mean, I, I, I tried, like I said, I tried to graph it um, with the t-test and I, I put the zero, one, and two for my x and it went, um, well, it went that way. <laughs> At this stage, um, with what you've learned so far, you're going to be making a, a table. The T. The T, T chart, the table, yeah. So the okay. class, if you want to have some X's to plug in, the classic choice that most students prefer is negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Those are like the classic choices. Right. So and that's a choice I... So how is it, I mean, I chose um, zero, one, and two, but I don't see how it's um, a horizontal line. That's maybe that's what I'm trying to say. No, it's not, it's not. 33 was a horizontal line. 35 is, is an absolute value. It's an absolute value. Okay. So there's a, uh, there's a difference when, the, when you're um, graphing it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolute values don't look anything like constant functions. Okay. So did, did everyone make a table? Please, they want to just make sure for this. Oh, I made a table. I'm I sorry. I didn't, but I didn't do the negative one. I mean, the negative two or the negative one. I just chose zero, one, and two, which is. Uh, uh, you might want some more. Idea. You might want a few more so you can really see what it's gonna look like. So, so you you would prefer to have like six X values? Oh, on... uh, there's, there's five of them usually, typically. Okay. And especially for these particular equations, you want 
at least five. Yeah, for, for things that we don't know how to graph yet, we haven't talked about the parent functions and transformations and all that good stuff. So making a table with more points is more beneficial to you because let's say you picked points that were only on the right side. Like right. let's say you picked points that were only on, oh, I don't know, like this side. I don't know if you can okay. see that. Then you wouldn't know that it looks like a V. <laughs> so getting oh, okay. a variety of points will help you see the shape. So I just about. lost the, I mean, like the whole graph. I just did one side of it, which wouldn't have been correct at all mm -hmm. if I didn't have the other side to exactly. show that it was a almost a parabola. Is that almost a parabola? It's it's an absolute value function. It's a V, so it looks similar, but a parabola is like a U. It's curvy. U? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Parabolas are curvy. They're U's. Um, absolute values are V's. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, no problem. All right, any questions on this one before we go to 37? It's a simple problem for me, teacher. It gave me like as x plus minus 11. But this one, it confused me. Oh, I see, yeah. It's an absolute value of x plus one. Yeah, just right now when I see your screen, yeah. Thank oh, you. sorry. Because I was uh, looking, what's... Okay, thank you. That's okay. Any questions on this one before we go to 37? Okay, so Kayla or Caitlin, could either of you help me with 37? Wait, it was 35 nonlinear? Sorry. Yeah, it's nonlinear. Oh, okay. Terry, Terry said nonlinear. Um, I have a question. Uh -huh. I just like the, you know how some equations have parentheses? Like, what's the difference with just like the lines? Like the Oh, the lines are absolute value. So that means distance from zero. So if we have like, let's say negative two, that would become a two because that's two away from zero. Or let's say we had a three, that would stay a three because it's three away from zero. So absolute value just makes your number, once you're all done simplifying, makes it positive because it's a distance. Oh, okay. All right, any other questions before 37? All right, so Kayla or Caitlin? I can go. All right. Um, I made a table for it. So I did for the left, negative one, zero, one, two. Okay. And then for the Y, I got negative two, negative one, zero, three. And oh. Hang on, I don't think I get the same thing. Wait, you got zero for negative one, right? Uh, negative two. Oh, let, let's plug it in real quick. Um, F of negative one is negative one squared minus one. So the whole negative one is squared. Okay. So that turns it into what? Uh, zero. Yeah, it'll make it zero, but it's one minus one, right? So that'll be zero. Yeah, because it's ne it means negative one times negative one. So it'll become positive. Okay. So that might have messed up some of your points. You might want to go back in and edit them a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put what I get. Um, and then y'all can let me know if you got something else. That's what I got for those five points. So negative two, three is the first one. Negative one, zero zero, negative one, one, zero, and then two, three. Did yes. other students get yes. that also? Yes. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, awesome. And that's how we got it. We just plugged it in, just like I did with that negative one. Okay. Any questions on that before I go to the graph? No? All right, let me go to the graph. Okay. And we know from our lesson that this one is going to look like a parabola. So it's going to look like a U. Yes. So we know not to make it straight like the V. The V is the absolute value. So don't make it look like the V. All right. Negative two, three is here. Negative one, zero is here. Um, zero negative one is here. 
seven, six, one zeros here, and then two, three. Two. And then try. I know I'm on a computer screen, so mine's not going to be very pretty. Eek. <laughs> but try to make it look like a curvy parabola. Parabolas are always curvy. So if you draw it on the test as a V, you will lose points because that means it's an absolute value. And if you draw an absolute value as a U, curvy, you'll lose points on that too. So make sure you know the difference. Absolute value, think about it. Absolute value is very straight, right? Straight lines. So that's making your straight V, straight. Absolute value is what's creating your V, straight lines. Squared is your curvy. All right, any questions on that before we go to 39? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I want to just uh, make the domain here. It's just, it's not a question. It's not uh, connected. The, the domain here, teacher, it's minus infinity plus infinity, right? Yes. And the range, it's uh, minus one plus infinity, right? Uh -huh. With a I bracket, to, with a bracket on your negative one, right? Yes, it's, uh, okay. it's included. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. I want to just, uh, okay. No problem. And then will this be a linear or nonlinear function? Oh, that's definitely no, not a line. <laughs> that's definitely not a line, right? Look at that. It's a U. No, no it's not. Yeah, not linear. Yep. That one's definitely not a line. I mean, worst case, if you write linear and then you graph it and you're like, oh, shoot, go back and erase it and write nonlinear. Because that's definitely not a line. That's curvy. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, next one. 39. I believe we have... Um, Ashley, Joshua, Michael, F, or Vanessa for 39. Um, I could try. Okay. Okay. What I did first was I, um, I count the difference. Okay. I count the difference between, um, X. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> X it was, um, plus one. Okay. And, and I did uh, so, you know, so forth and so forth, plus one, plus one, plus one. Okay. And at the bottom, it was for Y, it was plus four. No, wait. Six, seven, three. Yeah, plus four. That's what I got. Yep, plus. Okay. Four. So um, then on my paper, I wrote M equals. I picked four over one. Okay, good. And I did that um, two times, but I did it twice. And then I noticed um, it was a linear. Linear. Wait, right. it's not. It's not linear, or it is. Well, it is a linear. Is the way I pronounce it. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I just was trying to clarify. Yeah, so it is linear because we're increasing by the same constant, right? And you checked but two. You said. You check two of them. So you yeah. check like this one and then you can pick any other one and check that one. They're all going to be four over one. Yes. So as long right. as you get four over one for all of them, when you reduce four. 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 Yep, four. Mm -hmm. okay. Awesome. I thought I did that wrong. So that's why I was like, I do it, I do it. <laughs> no, you got it. That was awesome. Thanks for explaining it. I hope that helps people who were confused. Does that help a little bit? I'm still kind of confused because I don't know how she got the four. Oh, um, she went. Oh, I'll let her explain. Ashley, how'd you get the four? Um, at the bottom for y, I count the difference between the first y and the second y. So the first y is negative one, and the second one is three, and the difference between those two is plus four. And I went so far, and so then I went to the next one, three. And then it was seven. And the difference between those two is, is four. I mean, I had to add four to get to the um, seven. And then from seven to 11, it's a plus four. And you keep going over it. Like so that. you basically, you, you added the two, like this is negative three, and then you added one what to make it four. No, what do you see? Negative three is. Uh, I mean, it's negative one and one three. Uh huh. And then it um to get to three is you have to add four. All right. So you have to go one, two, three, four, plus four. 
she figured out from oh negative. from negative oh okay i i see i see what she, how she did that now because i mean i, I basically i have to make a chart in, in order to see but i mean she could, was able to do it without a chart um, you could also subtract it. you could also subtract if you take the three and you subtract the negative one that's going to give you four also that's what you, I did. You could also do the seven minus three. That also gives you four. It's if you subtract the, the right number, if you start with the right number and then subtract the left number, it tells you how much you had to add to get to it. Okay. That's yeah. what I did. I, I compared the differences between the coordinates and then just mm -hmm. checked a few for a pattern. Yeah, there you go. And I'll get the same answer. Good. Perfect. Well, an example. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like this one. See, oh my goodness, that's good. I think we have enough time maybe to do 41. Um, where were we at? Oh, can anyone who wants to do 41, can we just do 41? Tell me what we're adding by each time. This is the same thing picture here. It's they will find this low. It's like if can I do it? Sure. What are we adding by for the X's? It's uh, the X is it's minus three minus minus five. So we're adding how much? Two. Okay, and then from negative three to one, how much do we add? Negative three to one, it's two. Uh, I think it's four. Negative three. You said negative three to one. Uh huh. Negative three all the way to one. I think that's ah, four. negative four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Here, teacher, me, I found like the slope, it's equals to three over two. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, it does. Okay. I was just trying to follow the way Ashley did it because that's kind of how I how we explained it earlier. It's not my, uh, my way. Is it actually? I don't think it is. This isn't linear, huh? Or this isn't a slope. This is a linear, too. Yeah, it's a linear. I don't think so because there's a four oh, here. That is not a linear. Yeah, there's a four there. That messes it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if we make a fraction with these two, we get three over two is our slope. And then if we make a fraction with these two, we get four over three. So it's not linear. It can't change like that. It has to be the same fraction every time. But the fraction too, we can have like the same slope. But it doesn't. The, the slope between the, um, the negative three and the one so that slope between negative three, one and two, negative two, one, th those two points, the second and third point, that does not have the same slope as the other ones. That has a different slope. So check your second and third point again. Use the second and third point to find your slope and you should get four thirds. So it doesn't match. Okay, I will check them out. Okay, thank you. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions on 41? So then what would be the correct answer for 41? No. No, okay. <laughs> no, because they don't match. Yeah, just no. Well, I definitely want to get to the next two because that's increasing and decreasing. And that might have been what cut out in the video. I don't know what cut out in the video, but I'm going to keep going. So um, if you all have to go, I know that time is up, but I'm going to keep going because I really want to make sure we get to increasing and decreasing. Um, <clears throat> when will you post the class recording? I do have to go. Um, Professor Sievers, when do you post it? It's under his account, so. It's usually as quick as it can get up. I don't okay. know, it's got, it's got a render and then it's got to like post up onto YouTube. So within a couple hours after class, usually. I don't think you're recording this part though, just Thank saying. You. Have oh, have you not been recording? No, I'm recording. Oh. It says recording to upload. Okay, awesome, cool. <laughs> All right, so decreasing. So decreasing, remember, we always look at increasing and decreasing as left to right. We always read graphs left to right. So don't get confused and start going like, oh, it's going this way, right? Don't, don't do that. It's always left to right. So if you think about like you have a little person starting over here, happy to be in math class. Wait, that doesn't look very happy. There we go. Happy to be in math class. <laughs> so we always start on the left and then we're going to go to the right. So in this case, this person, if they're following this path, is actually hiking. I like hiking. Somebody's hiking. Is actually hiking down the entire time, right? 
hiking downhill the entire time? Yes. So this function actually is decreasing the entire time. So our increasing is going to be pretty boring because in this problem, we actually aren't even increasing at all. So we can just put none. We're not increasing at all. We're decreasing the whole time. So can someone tell me what the interval they think we would write if we're decreasing basically forever the whole time? Infinity, comma, infinity. Yep, negative infinity, infinity. comma, infinity. Good. We're decreasing the entire time and there's arrows on the ends of both sides of this line. So we know it goes forever. So forever on the left side from negative infinity forever that way to positive infinity this way, we're decreasing. Which number this one is 65? Yes, 65. Okay. Mm -hmm. 60. Okay. Any questions on that one? Um, well, I have a question, but I was going to say, can we change the arrow? Okay. It's, it's for this problem, but not for this problem. What is like, can we change the arrows into dots? Um, you can. I mean, you don't even have to draw these arrows. I was just drawing it so you could visualize what's happening. No, um, only reason I say the change to dots is because I just want to know what would be the point for that. Because from what I did, I did it as if there was dots, not arrows. Oh, so you drew it like this following your pencil? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. You, oh. know, you know how at the end of the... um the end of the line oh okay. no you have to have the arrows because if you don't have the arrows it doesn't mean it goes forever if you have a dot instead of an arrow here like this that means it stops right that's what i end up doing so now i would just ask them what would be the decreasing and increasing if, i just wanted to know okay. the number yeah if it was like that then we're still decreasing the whole time but our decreasing would be from i don't know negative one point whatever that is, six maybe, 1.6 to um, 1.5 maybe. That would be our decreasing if it stopped, if it didn't have arrows on the end. Okay, because this one- between the two points. And I was like, what? Well, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, any questions on that one before we go to the next one? Teacher, here it's decreased with in minus infinity plus infinity, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it starts in the left, it finishes. It. So it's yep. Okay. Exactly. All right, here we go. Here's one that's more fun. This is a better hiking trail. It's got some interesting things happening here. So we're starting on this side. Happy, happy to go hiking. Ready for a nice sunny day. So first we are going what? Okay, well, I need to we're going up, right? Yes, we are going up with minus two, minus, minus two, minus one. Okay, from negative two, here's negative two. Yes, negative two. We're going two. up all the way to negative one, negative then we stop. One. And then... Then we stop, maybe we like take, a, take in the view, take a picture, you know. Okay, and so then what are we doing? And then uh, zero until two, no, is it two? Is it one? Oh, so we're standing here now. What do we do? One, now? zero to one. Zero. We're going downhill, right? We're like, ooh, this is cool. We just did all that uphill, our legs are burning. Now we're going downhill, okay? And we're going downhill from what to what? From? Zero to one. Oh, we were at negative one though when we started going downhill, weren't we? Is it negative two? Negative zero. one to zero. We, we started going downhill at negative one. That's where my little blue person is. Oh. We started going downhill at negative one. So negative one to zero is downhill. And then we stop here. And maybe there's like a little river or something at the bottom of the canyon. So we're chilling, putting our feet in. Take a break. Take a break, yeah, go for a swim, whatever. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to continue along the path. Are we increasing or decreasing? We De decrease. Decreasing. And then we're, we're at the bottom right now, though. We're, we're all the way at the bottom of the valley. Uh, yeah. We are going to increase. 
So now we're going uphill. Maybe we're going to like where we parked or something. I don't know. Well, not where we parked. Maybe it's where our friend parked. Because <laughs> we parked over here. <laughs> so increasing. So it's increasing from where to where. Where did we start increasing? Negative two to two. No, we were right here. The blue person. Zero. Right? Zero to zero. when did we stop? Zero. Two. That's when we stopped, right? Yeah. That's when our little person stopped. Remember, all of these should be X's that we're talking about. When we're talking about Oh, no Y's. That's why we're that's only what looking at X's. What? <laughs> what about the Y? Yeah, why why is your elevation? We're not talking about elevation. <laughs> the elevation the is we're already X's. telling you. I'm increasing, I'm decreasing. That's us talking yeah. about the Y, but the X's is the location. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. So any questions on that one? I like the arrows. I think it makes it easier to see it because otherwise something, when you start looking, you might go back and forth and get confused. Yeah. So. All right, we will go to the next one then. Uh, I think we had both of these that we were supposed to do. So um, when was energy consumption increasing? Oh, this is perfect practice. Who wants to try it? I'll put the little person here. We'll pretend this is hills again, even though it's energy. Oh, there you go. Hiking day two. Who wants to try it? 93 is the increasing part. Um, he in, he, the increase would be at uh, 250, right? We're, we always talk about X's. So let's, what's this X here? We got to figure that out. Where are we starting? Nineteen sixty. Nineteen sixty. Yep. There we go. Okay. So nineteen sixty, and then we're going uphill, uphill. Nineteen ninety. Oh no. Nineteen eighty. No, no, no. Nineteen six. Okay, you want to go? 1980, yeah, it's between. 1982. Yep, and then we're chilling, getting a drink of water after all that thigh workout. Okay, and then? It decreases from <laughs> 1980 to 1990, but it picks up again from 1990 to 2000, and then decreases again from 2000 to 2010. Oh, okay. I got to write all that stuff down. <laughs> so I got your decreasing from 1980 to 1990. And then you said it picked up again. So what does that mean? Increasing that from 1990 to 2000. Okay, good. 1990 to 2000. And then it decreases again from 2000 to 2010. Another zero. There we go. Awesome. Cool. So is everyone able to kind of follow along with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just so on your test, I want to see little figures with smiley faces going hiking. <laughs> Make you happy in the middle of your test. <laughs> Teacher, I have a question. We need to write these numbers in the uh, is the in the bracket or it's open. open oh, bracket? that's a good question. Increasing and decreasing is always soft parentheses. Always. No bracket. No brackets. No brackets for increasing yeah. and decreasing. Because we, we don't increase and decrease at a spot. Because if it's the minus infinity plus infinity, it's the soft something, right? Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. But in the numbers, I don't know how. Okay. Yeah, domain and range, you can have brackets. They, they come, brackets can happen in domain and range. But with increasing and decreasing, we do not have brackets because we can't increase or decrease at a singular point. So it can't yeah. be equal to a singular point. You have to have like a range. Like so, parentheses. Yeah, soft parentheses, curvy ones. Okay. How come you you passed nineteen seventy? I understand that you the it increased, but wouldn't the nineteen seventy have increased? Or you have to increase by by multiple. Uh, as long as you're still increasing, you just write it as one interval. You don't need to break it up every time it changes the slope. 
as long as it's increasing the whole time, just write it as one interval. You don't have to break it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's why you didn't break it up. You exactly. went from 1960 to 80. Yep. Mm -hmm. And from 90, from 90 to 2000. Mm -hmm. That's the green one in there, if you can see it. I know it's kind of hard to see. That's this one right here, that little increasing part. Okay. I've got a hat. <laughs> and then okay, thanks, decreasing everybody. was Have 1980. Good day. Okay. I hope we get something like that so I can walk my little men. Because <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do the other one. <laughs> it's still a work in progress. I guess practice, practice, practice. Yes, practice. Lots of practice, definitely. All righty. Well, thank I finished you. it all. So y'all just have to do your graded problems now, and then you can turn it all in by tomorrow midnight. Thank you. Everyone have Thank a good day. You. Don't forget correct tonight. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye. And then All right.